Thank you for your purchase. The Mini Fish Farm is a complete system capable of raising 100 pounds of fish, like tilapia, to market size. The entire system was designed keeping size and weight in mind. It has a small footprint and can make its way through a 36 inch door. Energy efficient operation cost is under $5 a month. The Mini Fish Farm is simple to set up and maintain. Safe enough for a classroom environment, it can also be used as a teaching tool to teach topics such as water chemistry, animal husbandry, and fish biology. With the production capacity of a small-scale commercial system, it can also be used to produce fish as a crop for profit or consumption. However you decide to use it, you can at least expect 15 years of service. Composed of high-quality, UL-listed parts, the Mini Fish Farm is a sound investment. The beauty of the Mini Fish Farm is its simplicity. The setup process is easy, and I'm going to go through how to set up your system step by step. Follow that with operating your system, and then how to introduce animals. Before we start assembling, there is an instruction manual that will play an important role in successfully setting up your mini fish farm. Please locate it and read through it before beginning. It will point out three things you need to consider before starting the assembly process. A level surface, space, and weight. A level surface is required to ensure proper flow dynamics. The mini fish farm functions using simple hydraulics and gravity. A level surface is required to optimize results. You will need at least an 8 foot by 9 foot area that can handle more than 4 to 800 pounds. The mini fish farm is 400 gallons and will weigh this much once full of water. The only tool you will need is a nut driver, which is included. Now that you have your mini fish farm, you're ready to begin building. Let's get started. Place the clarifier stand alongside the tank, keeping in mind that the biofilter will be placed behind the clarifier. Place the clarifier table on the stand with the weir on your right and the deep end on your left. Be sure the ball valve is in the closed position. Insert the water intake into the siphon assembly. Position the siphon assembly so that the water intake is flush to the bottom of the tank and centered. Place the opposite end of the assembly in the deep end of the clarifier table and attach the velocity reducer. Direct the velocity reducer outlets away from the weir, facing left. Place the filter pad in the weir. The biofilter is the next stage of filtration and attaches to the clarifier table by joining the true union, hand tighten only. To install the return, hang the return spout on the tank wall with the spout pointing inside the tank. Connect the opposite end to the biofilter outlet. This could prove to be difficult. Use only water as lubrication as other substances could foul the water. Once tubing is connected, Use your nut driver to secure this connection. To complete the boil baffle diffuser assembly, attach the air diffusers. Be careful not to over tighten. Hang the assembly so that the directional spout is tucked under the manifold and the diffusers are inside the tank. Be sure the spout is not obstructed to maintain proper flow. Position the linear piston air pump away from the water and above water level. This will prevent water from back siphoning into the pump. Slide the clamps that are included with your pump onto the L-tube first. Insert the 3 8 inch barb fitting into one side of the L-tube. Attach the opposite end of the L-tube to the air pump outlet. Secure both connections with clamps. To connect the air pump to the manifold, you will use the reinforced tubing run that contains a check valve. Test the check valve by blowing into each end of the tubing to determine which side is the inlet and which is the outlet. Connect the end of the tubing that allows airflow to the barb fitting on the air pump outlet. Connect the opposite end to the manifold inlet nipple. The first air connection you will be making 
is to the boil baffle assembly by using the 3 8 inch reinforced tubing without the check valve. Air supply to the square biofilter diffuser is provided by connecting the quarter inch tubing to the second valve position. Place the diffuser in the bottom of the biofilter. Connect the tubing for the return spout airlift to the third and final valve on the manifold. Close the valve on the biofilter drain. Fill the biofilter halfway with coldness media. Degassing is a simple and effective way to assist in the conditioning of water to support your animals. Spraying water as you fill your tank will introduce oxygen to your water and off-gas potential chemicals that may be present in your water source. With assembly complete, it is time to introduce water to your mini fish farm. In the next portion of this video, I will go over filling your filtration with water by starting a siphon, as well as how your aeration system should look when operating properly. Before you start your siphon, disconnect the velocity reducer from the siphon assembly. Flip the siphon over and submerge completely to remove all air. While it is underwater, cover the exposed end with your hand to seal it and prevent any air from getting into the siphon. Bring the siphon back over to the velocity reducer and reattach it so that the flow of water begins to fill the clarifier table. This may take a couple of tries until you get the hang of it. Allow the clarifier table and the biofilter to fill. You may need to add more water to the main tank since filling both will lower the water level and affect the siphon. Note that the section of the clarifier table with the filter pad will not fill up completely. This is okay. Once filled to the appropriate levels, start the air pump and slowly begin to open the valve for the airlift. Your flow should look like this. You will need to saturate the coldness media in the biofilter. Do this by pushing the media down into the water with your hands. Once you have allowed your system to run for a couple of days, the next step in setting up your mini fish farm is seeding your biofilter. Biofiltration is a natural, two-step process that changes ammonia into nitrites and then to harmless nitrates. The process is performed by natrifying bacteria which are found naturally in the soil, air, and water. These bacteria attach themselves to solid surfaces, forming what feels like slime. Sufficient bacterial colonization of a biofilter could take between four to six weeks in natural assimilated conditions. In order to jumpstart your biofilter in the mini fish farm, add the pre-culture nitrifying bacteria from Proline that's provided with your kit. It is normal for your bacterial solution to have a strong odor. Pour the bacteria directly into the biofilter. Reduce the airflow going to the biofilter diffuser during the first few days. Within a week or two, the media will become colonized with bacteria and the media will become neutrally buoyant and occupy the entire water column. The bacteria need something to feed on, so if you wish for them to survive and proliferate sooner than later, you will need to feed them ammonium chloride from Proline. Do not let the ammonium level exceed 3 mg per liter or you may run the risk of inhibiting the growth of the bacteria and overall nitrification. During this bacterial proliferation time, run periodic checks with the ammonia test kit and try to keep the levels around 1 to 2 mg per liter. Depending on the number of water quality factors such as pH, salinity, and temperature, the time it takes for the bacteria to start oxidizing and converting ammonium into nitrite can be between 1 to 2 weeks. Once you notice the ammonium levels are dropping, your bacteria have begun to become established. 
zeolite is used as ammonium binding ion exchange medium. You will use this to control initial ammonium spikes. We recommend that you place this in a small filter bag and hang it inside the tank so it does not clog your siphon intake line. Sodium bicarbonate, commonly referred to as baking soda, is used to raise your water's alkalinity or its ability to buffer against large pH swings. A list of additional water quality chemicals that may be used to condition your water to fit the specific needs of your animals can also be found in your manual. We recommend that you purchase some type of measuring tool to test your water quality. Appropriate tools include meters, kits, or even strips. Using these tools will allow you to figure out your water quality ranges. You will then be able to follow the AES Tech Talk number 47 entitled Water Quality Guide to be sure that you are within the proper water quality parameters for your species of fish. At this point, add the remaining biofilter media. Continue to test the ammonium levels daily until you have a reading of less than one milligram per liter, preferably near zero. It's important that you do not add fish to the system if your levels are still greater than one milligram per liter. It is also preferable to wait for a reduction in nitrite before adding fish. Once there's a reduction of nitrite, it is safe to add fish and begin feeding small amounts. This will not only provide ammonium to the bacteria in the form of fish waste, but will also not overwhelm the newly established bacterial colonies. Your biofilter is now acclimated and ready for normal aquaculture production. To clean the clarifier table, you will have to stop the siphon from bringing water to the clarifier table. To do this, remove the siphon assembly connection from the velocity reducer. This will break the flow of water. Place a 5 gallon bucket below the ball valve drain of the clarifier table. Slowly open the valve. It is important to do this gradually or it may be splashed with the water that is draining from the clarifier table. Drain the table completely. Using the provided squeegee, bring all of the solid waste in the clarifier table down toward the drain. Be sure to monitor how full the bucket is getting. The clarifier table holds more than 5 gallons of water, so you will need to empty the bucket midway through the cleaning once the bucket gets full. Rinse the clarifier table drain with some water. Rinse the velocity reducer and filter pad with water only. Using anything else will endanger your fish. Reinstall these pieces as you did when setting up the fish farm. Reattach the pieces you disassembled for cleaning. Restart the siphon and allow the clarifier table to fill. Once that is complete, you should be able to tell how much water needs to be replenished in your tank. 